Hello and welcome to the final video from Flight Simulator 2020. Now I did uh, record this video live and the, the audio was all live as well. So unfortunately there was some Nvidia shadow play issues. Maybe I need a bit of recording software, potentially. Uh, but that's a problem for another day. However, back to flying. So we're in a helicopter and we are at the Royal Naval Air Station Gannett in Presswick Airport. Now, a slightly different video from me, you know, I'm not flying a Britain Norman Islander, so happy days. So today's flight we're going to be simulating a mountain rescue on top of Goat Fell, which is the mountain where you can see the custom destination marker there. Now, Goat Fell is the largest hill or mountain in the Isle of Arran and potentially a climber could have gotten a bit in trouble, let's say. Now that's the, the, the theory behind this. Basically, there's no real scenario here, but this is how I was trying to practice a little bit with helicopters for search and rescue missions before 2024 is released. Now, there's some issues with the rudder pedals, I think, whereas they are overly sensitive or under-sensitive. Now, I did manage to smooth that out a little bit before the end of the video. Now, that was after several attempts at landing on the summit. So, right now we're flying over HMS Gannett in Presswick Airport as we head to the west. You can see the Isle of Arran in the background, and that's going to be our destination for today's video. Once we get there, we're going to try and do a pinnacle landing on the summit. Now, the summit is fairly, it's fairly flat, but in reality, it's quite rocky. Now, in the simulator, that's not the case. The terrain data is not quite there. Maybe in Flight Simulator 2024, it will be. So we'll have to wait and see if that's any better. And I will, you better believe it, be testing that out probably pretty soon after it's released. Now, we're just flying out this western approach, or western departure, I guess, and basically what we're going to do is just fly over Troon and the Lady Isle, which is an island that has a lighthouse on it apparently, which I didn't know, which is actually the far left island on the screen there. So you can just see Troon coming up here, and we're flying over a nice little golf course, which is just pretty much right outside the airport. Um, which has a nice cycle path if you're into cycling, which I had been for a little while before I got fat and lazy. Uh, however, I digress. Here we are flying over Troon and Lady Isle. It's a pretty nice area to fly over, to be honest. Like, nice coastal views. And you actually get a nice view of some of the towns and everything below as well. And the auto-generated scenery and with the, the most recent... UK and Ireland uh, map data that was released. It actually looks pretty believable as well. So, flying past here, looking at the nice little part here where there's Troon Harbour, you can see maybe some ships there in 2024, there hopefully will be there because that's where they're tracked. Um, and you should be able to see the ferry that departs there to go to the Isle of Arran, the MV Alfred, which is a catamaran of course. Now, Troon is a pretty nice place. It's quite a posh area, at least most areas are. If you've ever been there, you'll know what I mean. Um, and they also have a nice little chip shop right down on the harbour as well, which is apparently very good. Although I've never been there, but it does get some pretty nice reviews. So as we get over Troon and Lady Isle, we will start flying up the, the coast, kind of northwestish. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just directly fly across the Firth of Clyde, which is the, the body of water that we're seeing right in front of us right now. Once we get to the Isle of Arran, we're going to try and scope out a nice landing site. Now, it's probably going to be pretty difficult. There's going to be some wind there because, well, it's a mountain, of course, so that's going to be pretty challenging. And also the weather today in the sim, it's the 18th of November, so I was using live weather data. Although not the live time, because it would be a bit late. Now that weather data, it should be 
pretty realistic. Now, it does look as if it, you know, low clouds, it was pretty cold, there wasn't a whole lot of wind, but the conditions change a little bit when you get onto an island, of course. So that might be a little bit different. Uh, you can just kind of see Ailsa Craig a little bit out off the left of the aircraft, but pretty hard to make it out. It's a little triangle that you might have seen in the middle of the water. Okay, so we're just flying up the Ayrshire coast a little bit just now. Uh, you can just make out our draws in there on the right hand side with a little bit of island jutting out from it. And then further up the coast, you've got Largs and the Isle of Cumbry and Little Cumbry, which is just off to the left of that. Um, behind that, I believe, is Butte, if I remember correctly. Um, I mean, I could quickly look at my map here and that would actually... Yeah, it's Butte. Uh, Butte is around about that area. So, pretty nice. Uh, our draws in there on the right-hand side is actually another ferry terminal for the Isle of Arran, which goes into Brodick. However, there's, there's two different terminals because only one of the the ships that ferry passengers over can actually dock in Ardrossan now. So, that's been a big thing around about this area where not a lot of people have been pretty happy with. But there's your history lesson and your geography lesson of the Ayrshire coast. It's a pretty nice place and it actually is pretty cool to fly around as well. You know, you've got those big hills in the distance over there on the island and you've got the nice kind of smooth kind of not too hilly mainland area as well with of course Presswick Airport there as well. So I'm just forwarding a little bit here just to or fast forward and even just to try and get us there that little bit faster. I think in reality this probably took about 45 minutes to fly this full route there and back. So of course I have left quite a good bit in as much as possible. It might have been slightly longer but you know, we'll, we'll have a look at that. There was a few hiccups, shall we say. So here we are just approaching the Isle of Arran. So a couple of things to call out. So just off the nose of the aircraft, slightly behind that pillar, is the town of Brodick, which is where the ferry terminal uh, is. So when you're getting off the, the ferry, you'll go off there and you can walk along the coast to the right there. And then you can see Goatfell, Mountain, Corbett, just in the middle of all those other peaks. So it's the slightly taller one. Some of them are roughly the same height, but it just happens to be that little bit taller, which makes it the largest mountain on the island. I don't know if you can call it a mountain. We have a very odd naming scheme for things like that in Scotland. Uh, so a Corbett is like slightly less than a Munro, and a Munro is the highest. Um, I could probably get you the definition to be fair. Uh, so a Munro, let's see. Um, a Munro is, apparently the English translation is Big Mountain. So, you know, I think that's pretty funny to be honest. So Munro is a mountain in Scotland that's over 3,000 feet or 914 metres tall. So Goat Fell here isn't quite a Munro because it's just not quite high enough. Um, but it is still a pretty fun mountain. I've actually climbed it twice. Uh, one time in January when it was extremely icy and windy. And I don't know if I'd recommend doing that. So if you ever are going to come here, don't do it then. Uh, now you can see the uh, the path here that goes up the mountain just off the, the side there and as we look around in this direction you can just make out Brodick Castle off to the left, it's that little tan thing there. It's obviously quite hard to make out but it's a pretty cool castle actually. Uh, but you can see the hiking path just off there snaking up and you can see that winding its way up to the top of Goatfell as well. It's a lovely place and if you've ever been you'll know what I mean. But if you haven't, and you kind of live around about, you know, that area where you could travel there, like it's easily accessible by train to get to the, the ferry ports in either Troon or Erdrossen pretty easily. So if you haven't, honestly, I recommend it. It's amazing. But this isn't a travel video, to be honest. This is a search and rescue practice video for Flight Simulator 2024. So Goatfell is 874 metres in elevation, just in case you really wanted to know. 
So the approach to the summit here... Of course, I'm not that familiar with flying helicopters in Flight Sim 2020. They said 2024 there. I have flown helicopters in a lot of different simulators and games. And I really found it extremely difficult to use this one. Now, I think the Gumbrial, or whatever it's called, is a lot easier to fly than the Bell 407. Which is what I'm flying, obviously, I haven't mentioned it until right now. But I just, there's something about it that it just doesn't... It's just really, really twitchy and it doesn't handle that great. And I'm not really convinced that that's how this helicopter would fly in real life. Because it would be almost impossible. Maybe it's a, a sensitivity issue with things like the rudder pedals or something like that. It's something I need to iron out, but at this point, you know, it's so close to 2024 coming out that I'm not even going to bother trying to fix it in 2020 yet. And what I'll do is I will play around with it and fine tune it as we get into 2024. So right now, what we're basically simulating is that just off to our right there on the summit, somebody has fallen and they've become injured and they need us to come and save them. Now, the ironic thing is that they were dumb enough to call me to come and save them. Now, I don't know who thought that was a great idea, but somebody did. And let me just be honest, it's not the best idea. I'd probably have had an easier time, like, flying one of the cub crafters or some shit in there just to like to land on the top of it and it would have probably been a lot easier than it was doing this so basically what i've done here is i've scoped out the summit i know where my landing site is i've had a look at it i'm pretty confident and what i'm now doing is i'm just gonna go into the valley a little bit here get a little bit of distance so that i can turn back around and once i've turned back around I can start to make my approach to the summit and hopefully it's going to be fairly slow, fairly smooth. We'll see what happens. So it's looking pretty good. Looking like it's actually going very well at this point. It actually feels very smooth. You can just about see it coming into view there. Yep, there we go. So the summit's just off to the right there. You can see that and Holy Isle in the background, which is a pretty nice view from here. Okay, so, the summit is a little bit sloped, so there's a little bit of, you know, uh, an incline on the landing site that I'd picked out. I hadn't really scoped it out amazingly before landing. You know, I took one pass and I thought, yeah, that looks okay. And obviously it's not that okay the closer you get to it, but it is doable. I think somebody who has a bit more experience could probably do that a lot easier than I did. Again, our approach is still looking pretty nice here. We're kind of getting blown around a little bit, but I think that some of the oscillations we're getting is from the pedal inputs. I think... I don't know, again, if it is the pedals or if it's the sim. I get the feeling that it's the pedals. They are a little bit too sensitive, but then a little bit not sensitive enough at certain points. So what I did was, after we've tried this approach to Goatfell Summit, I had tweaked it just a little bit to try and make it a little bit easier. But you can see, like, see, as the airspeed slows down, that tail rotor is going to have a lot more authority on my flight and not the other way around. Like the, the tail rotor will start to spin you in the opposite direction of where you're torquing the, the rotor blades. So if I am reducing the throttle, it tends to yaw to the right. And if I'm increasing it, it will yaw to the left a little bit. So you need to counteract that with the rudder pedals. Now the difficulty is, if your rudder pedals are too sensitive or not sensitive enough, you are going to find that those precise inputs that you need just aren't there. So, I've had quite a bit of trouble with these T-Flight rudder pedals for a while. Still, at this point, I'm really not sure if I want to keep them. But I have thrown the box out, so there's no way I'm getting it refunded at this point. Okay, so we can just see what's happening here. So we're, we're starting to look as if we're making an okay little approach. But, we are torquing a little bit to the right. So, we counteract that a little bit. 
And as we start to get a little bit closer, I think what happens is we do get a little bit of the ground effect, potentially. Not sure how well modelled that is in the sim, but we are going to start to let you can see where we're completely rotating to the right. I have overcorrected to try and get the nose pointing in the direction I wanted. And then as soon as I just let that little bit of pressure go, right back in that direction that I don't want to be facing. So at this point, I think probably instead of continuing this approach, probably should have thought about maybe, you know, abandoning it and going to an approach from the opposite side. Because I think that actually would have been easier now that I'm looking at it the first time around. There's a lot more flat ground there that you could come in towards. As you can see, it didn't quite work, so I found that the aircraft decided as soon as I pitched forward a little bit, we gained a bit of altitude. So the problem I now then had is that I've gone to try and reduce that altitude a little bit. And also, what a lovely view of Brodick and the river that flows through it, the Holy Isle in the background there, and then you can kind of just about make out, you know, you actually can see it quite well, I guess. The, uh, the coast, the mainland, it's a, it's a lovely view and when you're actually up there yourself, like on that hill, Mount Corbett, Goatfell, it's pretty nice, especially if you get a great day for it. One time I'd climbed it and it was just nothing but fog at the top and it was pretty miserable, but second time around, some great views before the clouds came in of course. Now what we're doing is we're going to turn back around here. You can see I'm just trying to be really, really gentle with the aircraft. I'm just trying to get it to just do what I want it to do. I think there's something about helicopters where if you need to treat them nice. If you don't treat them nicely, they will treat you very badly. Like you've got to be just really smooth and really gentle. Just if you, you just get the nose pointing in the right direction and you just kind of nudge it that way and just keep keep nudging it ever so slightly. You don't want to be harsh with the inputs, as I was with some of the pedal inputs. There's something about getting closer to the ground where you're starting to see that you're you're sinking a little bit and you're going to get just a little bit too closer that kind of brings in a little bit of panic. And then my feet start going like left and right and left and right and I'm trying to like correct it, but I'm overcorrecting. I think that's maybe just something that you get a bit more used to the more you do it or the more you fly. I definitely need more practice. If I do intend to do missions like this in 2024, really gonna have to to get good. Okay, so this is, if you look here, we're actually, we're doing okay, we're just a little bit low and obviously we need to go a little bit higher up, but as soon as we put that throttle in, we're yawing all the way to the right again. Or the left, depending on what's happening here. But we are getting a little bit closer to the summit and this does seem like a bit more stable than if you compare it to the previous one, maybe. Again, as we're adjusting that throttle, or the collective I guess, you can see it's just kind of turning itself. Now I think maybe if you really wanted to, you could actually kind of, like you could control the direction you're facing with that. But the problem is as soon as you change your collective a little bit, you're just gonna you're just gonna start weaving all over the place, just like I did there. But it did work because we got closer to the ground and we landed. Now it was a pretty rough landing, let's be honest. It's not my best. I hope to do better the next time. But you do get a nice view from up here. And technically, since the helicopter hasn't died, then that means I have successfully picked up the casualty. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make our flight back to Presswick and drop off that casualty to be taken to the hospital, potentially. We could, we probably would actually fly them directly to the hospital, to be honest, maybe. That would have probably made more sense now that I think about it. Anyway, right, so now what we're doing is we are departing back to the east. And what we're going to do is we're going to fly back along the coast a little bit. We're kind of going to just aim for Lady Isle because it's a decent landmark. And then that also, like the, the kind of peninsula where Troon is, 
it's for you to be able to navigate your way back to the airport. Because it's pretty visible from a good distance, it does stand out a little bit. It just makes that little bit of like, if you're just purely flying VFR, it makes your life a little bit easier. Obviously I don't fly a lot of VFR, but I do know this area quite well. So when I'm looking around, I'm like, yeah, I know where that is, and I know where to head to get back to where I want to go. So that makes my life a bit better that way. But we're actually doing a nice little, you know, fairly fairly fast run back here. And I think what we'll do is we'll just we'll fast forward a little bit of it, just to make it not be so long. So you can see Troon again and Lady Isle we've already passed and there's like that little tiny island to the right there, that's I don't think that's actually an island. There's like a bit that juts out and it's like sometimes underwater, sometimes not. So it's maybe something to do with that and the sim doesn't quite pick it up properly. Now of course we are coming in quite high into the airport here, but do you know what? I'm not bothered. Like we managed to land on the top of the mountain and I didn't crash. Plus I don't have the crash physics turned off. So if I've managed to do that without destroying the aircraft, to be honest, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to not be terrible, I guess. Probably like a lot of people might watch this video that are like actual helicopter pilots and they'll probably be shaking their heads. But look. Like, I don't have any flight experience in a helicopter. The most closest I've probably had to actually using the real controls was at an air show where they had an Apache and they had the joystick, the rudder pedals and uh, the collective. And I did okay, I didn't destroy the helicopter. But it wasn't pretty. I guess it's all about experience. The more you get used to it, the more comfortable you'll be with how you should react with the controls and how you should, uh, I don't know, change your, your rudder direction depending on whether you're decreasing or increasing your collective as well. There's probably going to be somebody that comments in the video and tells me everything I did wrong and you know what, I'd be quite happy with that. You tell me what I did wrong and I can practice and get better at it. So we're just coming back in to, to land where we took off from. A little bit twitchy on the collective again, so we're kind of, you know, going up when we should be going down. But I did, I think I was feeling like we we're getting a little bit close to that building, and I didn't want to crash, you know, a, a fairly safe place to be landing. Now at this point I do have the rudder pedals a little bit more, well, I basically reset them back to default, and they were a little bit easier to control, but you have to be much more precise with them because the, the sensitivity was turned more towards the higher level, I believe. But I found that I managed to control it just that little bit easier and I think I was just being conscious of my rudder inputs and trying to, to keep them fairly steady, but also trying not to muck about with the throttle too much. Now you can see here, this is actually, it's kind of visible but there's like the markings or the outlines of a helipad here. I checked it on Google Maps, it is definitely there. And we're basically just going to try and land in the middle of that. Okay, so once we've landed here that's going to be pretty much us. Uh, it was actually a much better landing on the way back than it was on uh, the, the summit of the mountain. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video. I am sad to not be playing 2020 probably ever again if 2024 is as good as it should be. I'm really hoping that's the case. Um, now, if you have enjoyed watching this video for whatever reason, thank you, first of all. But if you do feel like you want to continue watching more videos like this, I do promise to try and improve them as much as possible every time. Uh, but yeah, just uh, feel free to subscribe and remember and like and share the video if you wish. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day and take care and bye.